the way there, there would have uh -huh. to be, you know, the uh, trying to enforce the right way to down there. And my understanding is that the cooling uh, requirements for that are quite different in comparison with what's needed as far as a type sapphire laser. Is that correct? And so it's very sensitive as far as uh, those things are concerned. But um, the hope is, and so of course what we're trying to access is a different spectral region than what we can obtain using a type sapphire laser. Um, but otherwise, the same requirements apply as far as certain cavities and stuff, or not so much certain cavities, cavities located inside the laser cavity that enable us to do our investigation. So in this case here, for example, the output couple is located in this compartment here. And so if you look through there, you may even be able to see uh, the new amount associated with that output couple. And then in addition, in order to broadly tune the laser, we have these pair of prisms uh, that enable that the laser to be tuned. Uh, but still retaining a pretty broad spectral output from the laser because it's the spectral output of the laser that we uh, look at using currently a, uh, a large uh, monophonometer coupled with a diode array detector. Now clearly if we uh, go to a type of chromium uh, force light laser we'll have to change the nature of the detector so we'd have to get a infrared sensitive uh, diode array or something like that in, in, in uh, comparison with the, with the photo diode array that we've got there presently. And clearly we'd have to get a different pump laser as well, and I gather that, at least according to, I think, one of the quotes uh, that you sent, that it wasn't actually clear that that was included in the... Did you actually include a fiber laser or something associated with those as well? And so, yeah. um, things like that would be needed as well. Device. But the funny thing was, the original optics came from a Russian source. Mm -hmm. In fact, we built this before uh, commercially available high sapphire lasers were generally available within the U.S. So now some of the optics now become coherent optics, but some of the optics are still um, Russian ones in the sense of the output couplers, uh, mostly speaking, are still Russian output couplers because they have large wedges on them to prevent back, uh, feedback from that output coupler into the rest of the cavity, which uh, is bad news as far as the intracavity uh, laser technique is concerned. So in this case, uh, I, I kind of switched the laser on. If that's get this to, to run, uh, hopefully we can show that in real time to you as well. Now, we don't, have any, don't necessarily have anything in the cavity to look at, but uh, if we need, need to be, we can turn something on for that mm -hmm. as well. So let me um, go get the laser. Let's be working. Uh, 4.5 watts from the birdie, and whatever that is that's coming out of there. Um, we've got a power um, meter on there so we can pick it up a little bit. So this is, as I said, the upper cup, uh, coupler is, is just in there. And these are the tuning prisms, and you may be able to see the uh, light from the pump laser, that green light, on there. Uh, it's, cause the, it turns out, as you know, the, 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 uh, the pump beam is very close to the uh, infrared beam for a pipe that. Crucially, this compartment constitutes an oven, and the, um, the iodine is contained within a, a quartz uh, chamber with Bruce Durango windows on it. We can't see them because we have it all blocked off, because um, generally speaking, if there's too much draft and stuff within the, within the room, it sort of upsets the laser, and so it doesn't, isn't, doesn't give a stable uh, result as far as looking at the, the spectrum. You can actually see one of the beams of light on that mirror over there, and you see the red beam and where can located where you can see it. That constitutes the beam that's passing through and you're just standing in the way of the beam at present so you can't see it because the beam's glass is going through here. In any case, um, then the tissue optic modulator splits the portion of the beam off and goes on to fire there, there, there is mirrors onto the beam, um, into the monophonometer that's over there. Is that sufficient for your yeah. okay. 
So all I'm doing now is trying to, as part of this optical chain, there is a um, mirror that deflects a portion of the beam into a photodiode, and that's what this display is showing, the output from that photodiode. Um, let me change something here so we can still say something like this. So this is the broad output now from this laser when image when directed into that monochromator and then onto the diode array. And then by playing with this thing here I can move that display across as uh, we need so as to see absorbance by something. Now it turns out in this particular region there's nothing really doing the absorbing inside this laser cavity. And so we can, um, because it hasn't been pumped out in at least a month, it's probably, it's probably water and stuff in there. So maybe we can scan um, along and see if we can see some absorbers uh, to illustrate the nature of the absorption uh, as well. features could well be due to molecular absorption that's going on inside that cavity as well, based on material that we've um, made in the past here.